Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? What time is it? Slow in the corner for the win! Oh! I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. Now Myers should win the league, yes! And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. Stand and move! Well, hello and welcome to the Below the Rim show, a show dedicated to the BBL. It's me, Pabs. I'm joined, as always, by my main man, Ads. How are you, sir? Um, very well, thank you. Good man. We're joined by the media guru that is Mr. Paul Nicholson. How are you? Oh, flower of Scotland. Oh, he's not well. I was actually, I actually, I'm on my phone, but I was, I was going to... Uh, Come on and not speak and just play. I don't know the ways you throws it. <laughs> and all the banter is obviously geared towards a trophy champion. Someone who attended in uh, in force did some great work as well whilst at the venue, as well as shitting himself towards the end of the game. It's the brave hearted bum squeaker, Mr. Grant Young. How are you, sir? The bum squeaker, that's your new name. <laughs> that says in primary school. It's I gonna stick me. What a good mood I'm in tonight, eh? I wonder why. <laughs> Have we just got the next two hours of uh, us almost going play by play, yeah? I'm not I'm not sure about play by play, but we'll certainly discuss it. it, it yeah. It's coming up on tonight's show, we'll go through the BBL trophy final a few other little bits involved with that as well would i take a look across the rest of the games not that there were many or particularly the sharks uh, and riders and and the two ends of that spectrum we may talk a bit about gb not entering the olympic prelims we've got the btr5 predictions got some quick fire questions at the end as well but let's start things off with the bbl trophy final and what a final it was we always say wouldn't it be good to have a close competitive game even better one that finishes on the buzzer and I mean it had everything absolutely everything and of course Mr Grant Young you were there what was it like uh it's honestly like you talk about cup finals or event finals wanting to be a spectacle you've got the place filled up really quickly at the start of the girls game which was massively competitive this time round compared to the Cup. So well done to Leicester and London for putting on a brilliant show. Um, before my main event, I suppose, um, place was jumping, intros were incredible. And honestly, like, even without the end result, you're like, this is insane. The place was absolutely jumping. Cheshire brought a full section, which were loud. Mm. You could hear them throughout the game. It was... You could tell they're a they're a finals team in that sense of they were just they knew when their team needed them and whatever else it was it was brilliant and oh, what a ding dong battle eh mm. like back and forth no one had a I, I couldn't tell you what Cheshire's biggest lead was but I think it was seven hours was probably three or four max and you're like that was just a proper good old game of basketball eh. Wasn't it just? But I'd like to just bring to your attention with I think it was two minutes, maybe two oh, minutes, I five we seconds it. to go. I got I a text message it. from Grant Young saying we've bottled we it. Bottled it. <laughs> we've bottled it. I was like, oh no. We went they, back and forth and we missed three possessions in a row. I was like, oh no. Yeah, I think they went up five, four or five points, wasn't it? And then Onwa has just poured in five quick points and, and it, yeah. you were back in it. It was, it was uh, that neighbor three, the neighbor three. Yeah, me, dagger, I I that looked broken. like a dagger. And his block afterwards, actually. Yeah. He did indeed have a, a good block. MVP, of course, um, Jeremiah Bailey having an outstanding game, including the between-the-legs pass, uh, which ultimately, I think it went to Onwaz ultimately, didn't it? Or was that back to Sloan? Anyway, regardless, it ended up swinging back around to Sloan. At that, play, at play that by, stage... I can tell you pass by pass that play still. <laughs> at that stage, Sloan was 0 for 3 from three-pointers. Did 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 anybody else consider that? I know the commentary team did to a degree because obviously when it came back, 
and Ant Rowe was like, "Oh, he's, he, you know, he's come up big. He's, you know, he's come up with the shot. Finally made one, but he's made it when he needed to make it." It was um, interesting. People I was talking to, staff of the club, or all that were saying Sloan looked a wee bit slow to get started. He had to work really, really hard to get his points. <clears throat> they chucked Jamal Anderson at him a lot again, like they did the first time at their place. And he had to work really hard. And to start with, he looked nervous, missed a few three throws, which you'd probably say normally would settle you in a final. But I think it was G said afterwards, like the second he knew that David had kind of set his feet in that three, he knew it was going in. Mm. But if you look at his if you look at his numbers, he basically shot his percentage. He shoots kind of high twenties at low thirties from three. He basically shot his percentage. Mm. Um, I did. I particularly enjoyed Onwaz turning around and cheering before it had even gone in. That was yeah, the, incredible. The hands were up. That was, was amazing. Onwa, Onwaz is his numbers. He hit the first basket for us. Those last five points he hit and towards that last two minutes were insane. And that being that unselfish play of taking that pass, like he could easily have driven in, gone for the two himself, but just playing that one more pass. Given the kind of moment to his teammate, yeah, brilliant, absolutely incredible. That's it one was a Ch- Cheshire were unlucky, weren't they? They were unlucky in this. <laughs> they are a final team. It was a great, great, great game. That it, but obviously, everyone. I mean, I, I don't know how many times I've seen that final play today, mm. and uh, and it, and it's 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 as simple as this for me. It's brilliant basketball from Caledonia, um, for him getting to that spot. And taking the shot is amazing. The Cheshire defense just collapses, though. And what I keep noticing is, um, who's number twenty-five for you, Grant? Oh, uh, Ali Otic. Fair Ali Otic or Jeremiah? Ali Otic uh, is twenty-five. Uh, not twenty-five. 24. Twenty-five for Cheshire. Sorry, oh. because um, oh, the guy he, he sort of inadvertently sets a screen by sort of walking on his own past. dude. Yeah. Um whoever's wearing number twenty five for Cheshire, I can't see who it is. Um Yeah, Teague is twenty five for Cheshire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he sort of w- sets this weird screen without really knowing it and, and obviously gives him the room to take the shot, but you know, Cheshire um left it wide open. So, you know, it's brilliant play. Um, and it was the same as that- under the basket one as well, like yeah, yeah. bound pass for Onwaz is open under the basket. Like it was a really good drawn up play, I thought by by Gareth Murray. He's obviously, you know, you know I mean, what? Uh, what I want to know is how close to what Gareth drew up was to play because obviously that extra pass, you're sort of thinking, well, I was wondering whether he was supposed to just drive to the basket and kick go for the two, yeah, mm. um, or it was meant to be a kick out. Mm. But whatever it was, it was it was a beautiful play uh, from start to finish, and uh, Cheshire fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. And you know what? See, after every timeout, we got at the tw- in that last kind of two or three minutes or two minute spell, we got everything that you wanted out of it. Mm. We got we got the easy two under the basket, we got or the three by on was mm. first, the two mm. under the basket, and then we got the stop on Cheshire down the floor to have uh, fourteen or fifteen seconds left. What a slide indoors moment, though, Mr. Nicholson, fatigue, who I didn't say fatigue, for Teague, <laughs> who obviously took that three. Um, I'm, I'm fairly confident that wasn't essentially the play that they were looking for, but good defense by, uh, Bailey. by well, yeah, by, by Bailey, but by the team in general. But if Teague makes that shot, essentially that's they win the game and he would have been MVP as well. But that was his first three. Sorry, I know you asked Paul, but that was his first three of the game. First three attempt, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was, yeah. Yeah, no, you, you're right, but, you know, it's, it's a beautiful battle. But, like, the, the geek in me and the coach in me was watching a couple of different things. And two things that really stood out to me was Gareth Murray's um, late shot clock management, I thought was incredible. You just see him on the sidelines, just squeezing the gaps when the ball came to Evans or Larry Austin, when it was five, six seconds left in the shot clock, knowing they're driving to the basket, which caused a lot of problems for Cheshire kind of late in the fourth quarter. Um, and then that final play, obviously Bailey's pass through the legs was so underrated that no one was talking about, yeah. everyone was talking about slow and shot, but that pass was insane. Like he was facing... High pressure moment, yeah. 
Oh, Such a Jeremiah defense. Bailey thing to do as well. Such a sweet <laughs> move. And Ads was right about the defense because I watched it. I watched it first as a fan and I was like, wow, incredible. And then I watched it as a coach and I went, what the hell happened to their defense? Because you got Will Neighbor was on help. Larry Austin was there as well. Evans was kind of the next rotating defensive mm. player, defensive mm. player. So when Sloan drives in and kicks to Onwaz, Evans runs at Onwaz. Then Larry Austin starts going towards Onwaz, even though he's going, there's no point in him going there. Will Neymar yeah, yeah. boxes out Ali Hodzic, who's like, there's two seconds on the clock that don't necessarily need to be there. And Teague just jumps around in the middle where there's no players there and no one actually picked up Sloan who's running out to the corner that like Larry Austin should have picked that up or Will should have run across to get the next pass and I'm it, just it, trying it, to find it there's a slow motion version of it somewhere mm. uh, I, I'm trying to find who posted it I've just found a good angle that um but they were Elliot, Elliot from Open and Looting posted a good angle from right behind so you see it, but if you watch it in slow motion, um, yeah, everything you just said, Paul. Yeah, and and, and actually, Sloan had the the balls and the cajon, you know, the cojones to knock down that big shot in a big moment, and he did just that. You know, yeah, he, he could have any. Hmm? you go, sorry, when you go, finish. Off. No, I say like any other time, you could miss that shot, but he had the balls to step up and take it. And it, it, I've it, got it, another it, question for you as a coach as well, Mister Nicholson. Go on. Was. Ben Thomas wrong to advance the ball on their last play. Absolutely. Uh, easy to say that with Gladiators win. If they miss the shot, it, no, sorry, if they make the shot and Cheshire win, it's the best thing you could ever do. Yeah, exactly. It's an impossible, it's an impossible question. It's, but you want to run as much clock down as possible, was, surely, and hold that. There was you know, so much surprise. You don't want to, I would say, sorry, you don't want to cause a turnover in, in your half of the court at the same time because then they're closer to the basket. Plus the don't, other thing don't turn is, it over there. <laughs> the other thing as well is if you look at the clock going down, whether they do go inside and go for the two points or kick out for three, at the end of the day, it's a tied game. Yeah. So the worst that happens is it goes to overtime. It's not like they needed to hit it to, you know, come from one behind or something like that. So, you know, there's three there's three outcomes, really. But that's what I thought would, would be better about, you know, not advancing the ball is that, it's a tied game. You want to give them as little less, you know, as little time as possible, if any. Yeah. And the worst yeah. you got is a is your you take a last minute chuck up and and it's it's uh it's overtime. Yeah, yeah but if you think session. about it, the confidence in his defense because he's got some great defenders on the team. You know, yeah. he's thinking in that time we can we can shut them down. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah, like Larry Austin. Um, for me, if Larry perhaps. Larry Austin is a bit like the Kevin St. Kitts of that play, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, just, just kind of left in no man's again. land. Yeah. yeah, just it completely gets it wrong. Um, <laughs> but, you know, Larry had a really good... He started off firing. I was like, uh-oh, Austin's yeah. going to have a have He was day everywhere here. first half. He was stealing yeah. the ball. He was rebounding. Like yeah. He was in the passing lanes. Ten was, boards for Larry Austin, yeah. Yeah, the reality yeah. is a game like that, it's, it's a one-possession game. Like Ben Thomas and the Cheshire and Cheshire Phoenix played a great game, and yeah. and, and Gladiator has played a great game. Yeah. It was down to one person missing a shot and one person making a shot. Yeah, the it. general it's, feel though, it's a classic final. Yeah, definitely best final I've seen in a long time. Yeah, the general feeling that like where I was was that there was a bit of a surprise that he advanced the ball. Hmm. So, yeah, I agree. I was I surprised. Think. I was really surprised. But yeah. Like Larry Austin had some first half, and then it was interesting. We always we started using our zone defense in the second half, or mostly kind of in the fourth, and we really that really kind of startled them. Ads, what are you doing? He's in the kitchen. I'm in the kitchen making a drink. He's, He's having a beverage. Pasta. I've got this. Cook, I've Ads. got this around the wrong way. I need to be running around the kitchen doing that. And <laughs> right, listen. After such a well, first of all, Grant, what was it like after the game? Oh, it was insane. I don't know if you've seen it. You've had the Gladiators GM doing a lap of the court. That was 100. hilarious. <laughs> and you know what? He's the first one to slag himself. He said that to me as well. 
Um, that's just the outcry of emotion and just your body's reaction. But yeah, brilliant. Sean, good man. He'll be listening to this. I love that. Yeah. It was great. I thought that was brilliant. When I, when I saw that, I thought, because you know what? I've been to a final. I was saying to Grant, when I, when I was at a final, when it was Raiders and Lions, we lost that final. The emotion of walking out of the arena, seeing the other team on the bus singing, dancing, mm. drinking champagne, having a whale of a time. And you just sit on your bus with your little protein bar and off your flipping trot. And the emotion of losing one is, oh, it's horrific. But Mm. flip that on the head, the emotion of winning a final and actually winning a final in the last second is just, oh, do you know what? I'm so jealous. I'm so jealous of anyone. It's honestly one of those kind of emotions and feeling like, I, I couldn't sit for the last quarter. I was just walking around the place, standing in different things beside other people. Like, I stood next to Joe Edwards, like, with the last two minutes during the halftime, uh, the final few timeouts, and he was like, this is amazing. So, Joe, brilliant job organising that yesterday, Mr. Edwards. <laughs> Incredible. He was well proud of himself. Full house, good show, halftime show. Scripted you know, it he, perfectly, didn't they? Like, yeah. <laughs> Well done, Joe. Scripted that show well. Um, <laughs> but that it's one of the hardest things to kind of compute. Like the most, see when that that pass went. When Onwaz gave that one more pass, the air disappeared. Like everyone just held a breath. Like mm. the place went. You could hear a pin drop. Like it was. It's one of those kind of mad moments that we don't really get that often because yeah. it means such a big thing. And the absolute pop in the atmosphere and the gr- and the host arena just erupted with a sound there was people running here there everywhere jumping up and down people hugging anyone and everyone um it's maybe it was, stuff in it. it exactly it's something that hollywood would write <laughs> it was incredible you had guys from yesteryear and from like the rock stage you had ian mclean you had keith bunyan there you had sterling davis there talk about bunyan like you know Take this question the right way. And if you haven't seen the pictures, you you might take this the wrong way. Did you manage to hold Johnny Bunyan's sword? Oi, oi. Uh, Unfortunately, I did not get to hold the sword. And and do you want to explain the sword? Well, no one thinks I'm a bit weird. Well, we already think you're a bit weird. Come on. Um, So apparently the sword was gifted by the owners to the team uh, during the week as like a pre-game like token and of... uh, like coming together, working hard, that type of thing. And so, yeah, it made an appearance during the trophy presentation. All of a sudden, there's just this sword in the middle of the How'd court. How did you get that through security? <laughs> I mean, a bit, considering we're like, we don't like knife crime anywhere, I was surprised if someone got that. Say, you're lucky you didn't come to pavilions. They, they take their bottle tops off the off the bottles of water. You ain't going to walk in with a flipping sword. <laughs> from the... hey, we did. It, 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 if Gareth or his assistant had it, it'd look like something with Lord of the Rings. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Gareth just had it down his jumper, like for the Braveheart moment of just kind of pulling it out. Mm. And you have my axe. Yeah. Um, uh. There was there was a, there was a couple of people on social media calling for the uh, Caledonia to be re- renamed the Caledonia Braveheart, <laughs> which I thought was quite cool. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Like I have never seen for such a long time that outpour of emotion. Like guys, mm. like. Johnny, Gareth, Fraser Malcolm, Ali Fraser, to even the Americans, to even like Faro Ali Hodgett, who's only been in for a matter of months. Like you saw what it oh, meant to every yeah. single member of them, their Absolutely. family, every member of like this the management team, to volunteers, to fam like everyone. Like there was like let's be honest, what final would you have had that amount of people on the court at that point? Security disappeared. It was brilliant. The, I have to say, the, the emotion from Onwaz I thought was fantastic because that guy's had a hell of a career. And to, for, for it to, and this is kind of going to lead on to our next sort of topic on this is um, the emotion around it. David Sloan was filling up when he was given his uh, post-game interview um, on Sky, uh, which was brilliant. Onwaz, like you say, was he just looked so emotional. Uh, and after the career that guy's had, it, it means an awful lot to these players. And I know that some people will say it's very close to the end of a, an in, an incredible game. An opinion, maybe maybe a little bit of a knee jerk reaction to to some degree. 
some might say that's almost a disclaimer but there's now a cry for you know why don't we keep both cups but then see just going on the emotional side of things like when I fight, when I finally got time for Jeremiah Bailey when it got a wee bit quieter there was tears in the guy's eyes hmm. like he's someone that's probably looking to use the BBL as a stepping stone onto a bigger league to kind of prove his how good he is and what he could be but genuinely like I'll sh- I'll sh- I don't know if I shared that picture and I know I think I put it on my socials like the picture I've got of Jeremiah holding the trophy that yes that was that wasn't a stage photo that's him genuinely holding that holding back the tears and when he when I started speaking to him I said that I was like, you you could tell that all these guys were just so that the outpour of emotion was so real and so true and so like beautiful for everyone because they saw what it meant to so many different people and mm. yeah what was your Is question. There- so oh, that was that was it. That was the, you know because of that because of the game. Oh, yeah. uh, should we be looking at keeping both competitions? I think people are in sport to win. When you get to this level, right? You're in it to win. Mm-hmm. And if you don't win, and if you're not part of that story, it's really easy to say, "Oh, it's a waste of time." But you try telling that to those gladiator fans those players the coaching staff the organization it's just you know they were there to win and it meant everything to them Hmm. if london cruised that whole trophy tournament would you be asking the same question i don't know i almost very true my outside for us to have four winners or something i do feel like for it to work even better it would be ideal to have more teams in the league but I would not be dropping anything. Like, mm. from a spectacle point of view, maybe not every game. Let's be honest, we've said it's the top of the show, not every game in a final ends like that. But there's moments in these things that makes you think, well, why would you want to get rid of even the possibility of that kind of proper final dream mm. happening for anyone? Like, it's unbelievable. Well, Aunt, Aunt well, Rose said it when he came on our show, didn't he? Why, why do you want to get rid of one? Ah, it's cool, mate. No, I was just going to say, I mean, has there been much reaction from the city of Glasgow itself? Has it been in the paper? and it's on its TV. News? It's been everywhere. So I was talking to a guy I know who works for BBC Sports Scotland being like, the three articles that they've published on it from immediate post-match, a bit with Gareth, and then the video, are, all three of those pieces are within their top 16 red over the last few days. Excellent. That's great. So that's I mean, that's just BBC. That's just BBC Sports Scotland. Um, wow. Yes, yeah, it's, it's well. Obviously, I see it all because it's on my social media. It's, it's yeah. I mean, I just the reason I ask is just because I find there's a lot there's a lot of similarities between Glasgow and Manchester. Yeah, um, that you're up against two very very famous football teams, um, similar sized cities. You know, similar kind of demographic, I guess, in a way. And um, no, I was just interested to, you know, I was hoping that that's the answer that you, that you give. <laughs> that you know, everyone sort of got behind it and reported on it well. But in mm. terms of the the other thing, perhaps mm. I've said it a billion times on this show. I think if you're going to keep both, then the the, the um, was it sorry? Is it cup or trophy yesterday? I can still get mixed up. Trophy, stuff. <laughs> trophy right, yesterday. So that one, you open it out as far as the D three, and yeah. do it as a national competition hmm. where there can be upsets from way down the leagues. Yeah, like the FA Cup. Um, yeah, just like the FA Cup, it's easy yeah. to do. You do it from national league D three upwards. Hmm. Now people talk about yeah, but what if a team like London ends up playing? a team in D3, you only play in a leisure centre. It's like you, you sort it, you find an alternative, you play it at the bigger club's arena. What You just do something. You know, you don't... Well, you just play the game. Like, you know, if Man United go and play flipping... Well, this is what United, I mean. You, you just play the game. You just play the game. Um, but, I, I, yeah, I think you need to do it like that, Ads, because I think with the trophy, the cup, the league, the playoffs, pre-season, 
everyone ends up playing everyone so many times, especially now you're oh, playing yeah. each other four times. And that's right? why the playoffs, the playoffs, obviously in the playoffs, but it's not very entertaining sort of the build up to the playoffs because you basically got two teams that don't make it. Um, what, one it's not like you're playing a, given. a series or anything like that. It's like, you know, if you, but unfortunately, until you've got 16 teams in the league, it's it's just not going to be as mm. as entertaining to watch the playoffs and do it as three game series or or whatever. I think you're right with the trophy though. If they if they are going to keep, which evidently they're not going to, but if they were going to keep um, two cup, well, I don't know how how flexible they are on this after what we've seen, but like you say, they would need to open it up or to, or, to like, further down the league so there's more teams in it. Go on, Ed. Like the FA Cup. You 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 allow the um the, well, the big boys aren't in it straight away, yeah. B, BBL and D one join at the third round. Mm. <clears throat> so, you know, anyone from you know, like a local league within reason, you know, in Manchester you've got the Mabel League and there's different divisions in that. So like the Premier League, which yeah. is the top league of it, you let them into it. Um you know, so you know, in theory you could have the Moss Side Tropics playing against um, the Manchester Swarm in round one. Hmm. You know what I mean? Not too much of a gap to start, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But then by the third round, you know, say the Moss Side Tropics do really well and make it to the third round, they then possibly get drawn against the Manchester Magic, you know, or even the Giants, you know what I mean? Mm, Absolutely. It would would be, uh, I think that would be quite good. But it looks like... Whichever cup, because I think there's still debate as to whether or not it's the trophy or the cup that's actually going to go sideways. Um, it looks to be that the All Star Game will replace that as such. Which, although it's not silverware, is still something that we'd all like to see. Celebration of the better players that come over to this yeah. league, whichever way they decide to do it, whether it's British players against uh, overseas players or whatever. But the the you're still cra- an arena with that as a spectacle. Of course, be of course, you're a full arena and it will still be entertaining you know the the purists in us would like also like in the nba will go well this is a load of nonsense it means nothing no it means a lot more than just what happens on the court it's the uh, the entertainment it's the publicity it's the sponsorship it's yeah. everything that can be created from it it's not just about the winning and losing when it comes to this there's, mm-hmm. there's so much revenue which can be generated from something like an all-star game well, and all i was going to say on that was it, it it's it's always been four items of silverware and an all-star game that only stopped mm. in the last sort of decade or so i think that's you know it, it they all coexisted previously yeah exactly yeah. and it, it was never a problem well. the only thing i wanted to say on it was that um professional players go their entire career or some can go their entire careers without winning any silverware so you pick up silverware in any league you play in a, a professional capacity, it is going to mean something. It's going to be, you know, if you if your your team pulls together and manages to overcome the obstacles to get to the final first off and then win it, players don't. Not all professional players experience that. Even NBA players, guys who go and play in the NBA, play in the NBA for twelve years, they don't get anywhere near the NBA finals, and there's no other competition out there they can win, and that's it. Well, that's Gareth Murray's first win. There you go. And it's his first and he's had a fantastic coach. career. Yeah. yeah. He coached it incredibly well. Right. We'll uh we'll leave that in the rear view mirror now, although I'm sure we'll refer to it again a few times. Or Grant definitely will refer to it a few times. He mentioned at every opportunity. As we, as we uh, head into the playoff kind of things. Oh yeah, the playoffs need to be longer, hundred percent. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Let's uh, let's have a quick break and then come back and talk about the Sharks and what they're up to at the moment. See you in a sec. Let's take a little look at the Sharks, who had a very good weekend. Arguably not as good as the Gladiators, but um, they are on a bit of a roll at the moment. They've managed to topple the mighty Leicester, who we'll talk about in a minute, but 72-64... Uh, they previously beat the Lions by two. Um, Scorchers 
they did what they well, didn't demolish, but they did beat they beat them twice actually, almost back to back. Uh, we're having to go back to the beginning of the month to see them lose, which was against the Cheshire Phoenix. It's been a decent uh, a decent little ride for the Sharks, and they're coming good at the right time, if you like. Um, I guess first of all, we need to talk about the kind of where this team's. I don't want to say what their ceiling is because that's you know a bit shitty. But can, do you think do you think they can make that fourth spot? Obviously, everybody wants to. Everyone who's going to be in the playoffs and it, you know it looks completely like they're going to make it to the playoffs. There's no doubt. Um, but they're knocking on the door now. That fourth spot. There's four teams. Uh, sorry, three teams now that are within uh, four points of each other. Yes, they've played an extra game, but um, they seem to be the hottest team out of the three that are there, with the exception of the Gladiators. Of course, he just won the trophy. Um, Nicholson, my man, what do, what do we make of the Sharks first of all, this run? I have to say, it's probably such a huge turnaround Sharks mm. have had, as in how they are perceived now. They were perceived to be a slow, defensive-minded team, to now be in a very exciting team with still having those defensive morals. Um, I think they can get into fifth. I don't see Manchester giving up fourth. And I'm sorry, Grant, but sometimes after a big win, <laughs> focus can get lost. So I can potentially see them going above gladiators and going into fifth, but I, I don't see... I don't see them go to fourth, and not because they, they're they not going to win games, but because I don't think Manchester are going to drop too many. Mm. Um, but I'm I'm really impressed with Sharks. They, they've been really entertaining. They, they've they put their money where their mouth is, so to speak. And, and you know, they're, they're, bear in mind last season, they were high up there as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. Finished second last season. That. Yeah, people forget that. Um, and I think... Add on, yeah. we beat them. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> um, I think they're, they're going to be right up there. And I think all things considering, you know, they would expect to miss out to Lions. They would expect to miss out to Riders, but they've beaten those teams. And if they can get into that, say, fifth spot, they will have a chance to get to the playoff finals. Well, sorry, if they get to the fourth spot, they'll have a chance to play yeah. finals. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. You know, the, but... they are just looking at their kind of run in, if you like. Their run in looks relatively favourable. They've played, they've already played the Lions um, the maximum amount. They've played them four times already. Obviously, they took two off them as well, which was relatively unheard of, you know, from what, what we talk about and, and how, we, how we talk about the Lions and whether or not they'll even drop a game. They've won their last five and their next five. Uh, consists of Cheshire, who who they did lose to earlier this month. Although, you know, they brought in all their new guys, so they're a very different looking team. They got the Eagles, they got the Phoenix again, Giants and Riders. So, I mean, it's not exactly an easy five games, but when you look at some of the fixtures and how they could have been and the way they've been playing lately, you've got to say they've got some sort. Of, they've got a bit of an edge on that. You can see them winning four out of those five games at least. Grant, my man, they've got a bit of a swagger about them now, like. The new guy, like Pipkins, has added a lot. It's allowed um, Kipper to come off the bench. And obviously, we've talked about how good Kipper could be, but he's been actually pretty solid for them off the bench. Um, Nelson's doing well. I'm really impressed by Ramsey. It's as if they've given up a tall guy, a slow tall guy, to Mm. bring in another wingman, and it's clicked for them. Mm. They're playing a total different brand of basketball. It's as if Atiba's kind of throwing out the the playbook for the first six months of the season or the first half of the season and gone, all right, guys, I'm going to try something different. Like, <laughs> they they were brilliant against us. They've been brilliant against Leicester. They've been brilliant against London. It's difficult to find anything kind of not going their way. Um, depth outside of the two guys off the bench, they're only really seven deep. Uh, is that maybe, the- and they don't really have any guys of, Height after Del Pesh off the bench, um, but that's not been a worry to them. No, and you know, go on, sorry. Yeah, and 
I'm just so impressed by their, their guard play now. Like, yeah, really impressed. And, and I think they'll finish higher than they are right now, yeah. A hell of a turnaround. I liken it to, you know, when you listen to uh, an audio book on Audible and you listen to it on one and it feels a bit slow, so you, you turn the speed up to one and a half, maybe two. It feels like that's what Atiba's done with this team. He's, he's, he's turned the speed up one or two and suddenly they're this really exciting attacking athletic team and I think what they've what they've added and what they've done to it has unlocked Saeed Nelson to it in a way rather than them playing a really slow offense and then giving him the ball with five seconds to go and say here you go do see what you can do he's actually almost spearheading the offense and, and running the plays and he looks really good for it adds my man what do you make of it well I mean in terms of the league standings the most interesting part now is between four and seven hmm you know, seeing who what what order that comes out in, um, you know, I'd like to think that Manchester are going to finish in four, but um, but but Sheffield, yeah, I mean, they started off and they didn't win a game for what four five games something like that. Yeah, slow start. Um, yeah, I saw the the first day of the season against Manchester, and you know they didn't look. In, incredible then, but yeah, they've made a made a run for it, and it's just Sheffield in it. Yeah, they're always going to be there, thereabouts. And but like we we keep saying, they finished second last year, which mm. was which was crazy. Um, so what's to say that they don't have another run at it? But I'd say that one, two, and three is pretty much a done deal. I'd say nine and yeah. ten's a done deal. It's that bit in between. Um. As, as to which order those those four teams are going to end up in. And it totally depends on, like, from Gladiators winning yesterday, in case we hadn't mentioned that, <laughs> what we kind of get for the rest of the season. Like, it'll be interesting to see what we play Manchester Sunday. It'll be really interesting to see what that's like. Mm. Like, I... I jokingly said to most of the guys, being like, I think I said to Steve, being like, you might not see some guys this week. And he was like, well, that'll be me as well. Like, it depends <laughs> how much of a hangover we kind of take into the week. Um, and deservedly so, to be honest, as well, yeah. for a lot of these guys. So it'll be interesting to see what Sunday brings. If we. Who have you got Sunday? Manchester. Okay. Cheshire got Newcastle, right? Okay. No, I'm just I'm just figuring out my my own personal maps in my head because I was hoping that you weren't going to say Newcastle because then I was like, God damn it! <laughs> well, let's not forget as well the best thing that's happened for Sheffield and for everybody in the last week or so is that they beat London, mm. and they've beaten them twice. Mm. I don't think that's good for what I want to happen, Ads. Not for not well, for Caledonia, maybe. I just every time London drop a game, I just. Pat myself kid. on the back and Cheer. go. <laughs> yeah, you you were right, kid. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you know, I I just I hope I kind of hope Sheffield get into that top four, just purely because they they've beaten London and they've beaten Leicester. Hmm. So if they were to get to a final, something in the back of the other team's heads will be these guys have beaten us already. You know, they've given us a battle. And I think that will make for a really entertaining final. Um, because it looks like, you know, they match up pretty well. It's me jumping a gun thinking London are going to be in a final, but well, you'd be, 95% yeah. of the it's not, it's not a hot take. world. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a hot take. But uh, let's look across at the Riders now as well in, in that discussion, because the Riders obviously lost that game. The game itself... Um. It's always it's always weird to see a lot of riders fans saying that the referees have uh, have let them down because that's never been the way in the past. Um, but evidently, there there were a few decisions <laughs> they weren't necessarily happy with. Um, they never their biggest lead on the night was just three points. Sharks led by as many as twelve during the course of the game. Um, well, it, it, is can this be attributed to just the referees, or was was Sheffield that good? Uh, Sheffield, Sheffield were a better team. Sheffield deserved the win. I don't think it's like you said. It's it's a it's not a hot take, and it's not a hot take that teams at the minute are, are moaning about officials. Um, mm. You know, but Sheffield 
played really well and they they deserve to win that game. Um, Leicester, it's not like Leicester have been dominating everyone this mm. season. You know, they've been playing much better basketball than a lot of teams below them. There's no doubt that they are where they are because they deserve to be there. But just like Sheffield, they they deserve to win that game. Do you Do think? We... Oh, God, sorry. I was just. Oh, they have obviously they're missing people at like corner Washington. Um, Walker's obviously been long term injury. Um, Adekoya's kind of been in and out, probably just kind of day to day injury kind of stuff. Though I reckon the only person who's played the majority of their games, and I could check, is probably Kimball. I reckon he's the only one that's. I can't Kimball think Mark of Mark Loving, probably. Mark Loving was injured at one point, was he not? Uh, I'm not sure, actually. Um, Or playing hurt, but Zach yeah. Jackson missed games, Pat Whelan's missed games. Hmm. And you're just like, I just wonder how healthy they've been. Obviously, they've had the changes at point guard, which we've heard has been like the first guy. Obviously, it was Gino, the first guy who replaced him, came in injured or like with no skin in his hands, whatever it was. Um, they've then replaced the other guy with Love, who was supposed to, who is just kind of filling the role in a space. And I'm whatever happens for them the rest of this season. In terms of finishing, where in the league and playoffs, you reckon there'll be quite a lot. I reckon there'll be a lot of changes next year at Leicester. Mm. They kept a lot of pieces from last season into this season. Prospect of Europe ended very quickly, and to be honest, without Kimball for mm. a lot of games, they'd be struggling. And well, Kimball well, came off the yeah, bench from last year. Absolutely. Plus, this is the first season where basically London have bought the success they've got. Mm. Well, let's, 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 not, yeah. let's, let's not be around the bush here. It's the first year that Leicester haven't kind of had it their way yeah. in a year that London have basically bought everything that they have achieved. But hmm. it's not as if Leicester then are massively or miles the best of the rest either. Well, no, well, this, this, this is know, the question not... I had as well. Is is if all right? Let's let's assume they. This has put a dent on them making second place. They've obviously got to play Bristol again, but uh, you know it's it's level pegging at the moment. And as you look at the form guide, you may be looking at Flyers and thinking they're going to hold on to second spot. Uh, is it is it disappointing? Is that a disappointment? Were Riders expecting to be standalone second, chasing the Lions? I'd say what so. Yeah, been, I mean, I'd say for sure, start, definitely. At the start, I mean, look, we all know Rob Patanastro. He he would have gone into the season expecting to 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 win it all. You know, and why, and why not? Yeah. But, unfortunately, London, as I've just said, have bought their way into being successful. Hmm. Um, Domestically, anyway. Yeah. That, that can't, you, you know, nobody, it, one player's salary is probably three times what the rest of the league's entire payroll is. Hmm. Yeah. They've bought they've bought themselves a fan base. They've bought themselves the glitz and glamour. You, you know, they, they haven't got you know the the reason I feel a bit sorry for Leicester is because yeah, it has been a bit of a, a weird season for them personnel wise, but you know, you gotta look at teams like Leicester with the long standing tradition of a of a lot of loyal fans and people that have been going for years and years, support them on the road, this, that and the other. London have only really started to have that now hmm. because the copper box used to be pretty empty most games if you look back at it whereas now they're having rappers on at half time they're making it the hottest ticket in town and when you've got pockets as deep as that you can do that hmm. as well as pay the players what they're being played so it's to me it's I still find it all a little bit ridiculous when you when you talk about London because I just don't see them as 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 I don't want to say part of the league because you know of course they were going to come out on top. How could they? How could they not? Hmm. Which is why I get so much enjoyment when they do lose games because obviously everyone <laughs> at the start of the season is like they're going to win everything. They'll win every bit of silverware. They won't lose a game in the season and da di da di da. But, but yeah, I, to to what you said, they've done it in the right way though. Like they, yes, they've they've got money and they've spent it, but they've spent it well. I'm not talking about, 
you saying that they bought a fan base. And I, I don't know where you're coming from with that. But so does every team, right? No, no. Because every no. team... No. Most teams do a lot of work in the community you, you, and do it that you, way. You cannot compare... Paul, look at your own club. No, you I, know, I know he's, your I understand what you're saying. London. You can't compare Manchester's fan base to London. But they've still got Caledonia's, to keep that fan base. There. Newcastle, you, you can't compare them. No, you, they've you still know. got to keep that fan base there. You yeah, but let's keep, let's keep the fan base there and let's bring in a whole new set of thousands fan of fans back. each week which is one of the issues they've got is it, they keep they have a nice full stadium but it's different fans every time and they don't have that yeah, of course it is but that and community then, that other teams have perhaps all this trash talk going on on social media about the merchandise and this that and the other you know what I mean it's like I had a look on their merch page the other day because they had that wrapper that they had on at half time modelling this bag made out of a ball and it is 200 quid if you want to buy one do you know what I mean? And it's like, yeah. all right, so where does that leave the rest of the league? Because I'm telling you now, you ain't selling 200 quid basketball handbags in Manchester or in Plymouth or in, you know what I mean? And then, I'd be interested to see what the sales are like in London, to be honest. And these jackets that they were all wearing the other day, which are on a pre-sale basis, do you know what I mean? You're talking, I, I put a bet on it that those jackets are going to be what four or five hundred quid yeah they'll be, they'll be made to order type, type situations but you know but I then, get then, it but... but then when you read the inside I sent it to pubs on the inside of that jacket <laughs> they've got this statement that they've written and I'm just reading it going bollocks 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 do you know what I mean because it just you can't apply it to a club that have basically been there for a year because this isn't the London Lions sure. of old. This isn't Vince's London Lions. You know, they're making out that they're this innovative team. It's like, of course you're an innovative team when you can spend that much money on players when you've got Sam Decker earning. And we know that it, Sam Decker, let me tell you, yeah, I read what? online, was earning 600 grand when he was playing in Turkey or wherever it was. And I know that he's earning more than that here. You know Grant, my man, go on. Yeah, Grant, you had your hand up. <laughs> just waiting for my turn after ads is finished. So, I don't know where I sit in this one, but I'm just going to say some things. Is this not just London putting a value onto the stuff around the league that actually for all the hard work a lot of teams do, I massively believe we undervalue our own game. Mm-hmm. I um, massively I think, believe. I think, it, I think it takes the piss out of every other team in the league. But is this not maybe where I'm not saying other teams need to do the exact same thing and have uh, handbags? Well, they can't, Grant. They can't. No, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. But is it not London using their market where like there'll be things that Plymouth can do better in their market? Paul would say that as well. There'll be things that Gladiators will be looking to do going forward because well, we yeah we've got some we've got some extra cash probably floating around. Sure actually, going, yeah, hmm. but you're not going to you're not depending gonna... on arena. You're but not we gonna could... have to do what London had done and start buying fans. You've already got fans. But we, okay, next thing we you will. said about when, when so... they extend to a bigger. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let Grant, let Grant finish. So the next thing you're saying about like the fans, they seem to be growing quite a good returning fan base. There's loads of keep kids and families wearing jerseys. They, they seem to yeah, okay, maybe initially didn't build it organically. But this audience is coming back. They've had they've had four or five home games in the space of three weeks before. And the attendances is pretty good, regardless if it's one-off visits or people okay. returning. And so it'll be interesting to see if, and then we're never, we're not going to find out. We're not. Okay. It'll be interesting well, that... to see how many fans, like if they do season tickets next season, how many mm-hmm. fans are put exactly. in their pocket or business clubs or whatever are doing it to come along to games. Because you know what? London are London. They're in the biggest market in the UK. They are doing things differently that other teams can go, wow, we just wish to do that. But it challenges teams to not just accept the same as every other year. It's going to challenge teams to go and look for additional source of incomes, make themselves more appealing to investors and buyers and even to players to up their value. Like, let's look at it. Teams this season are a little bit deeper. Is that because they knew London were going to be? So teams have looked to strengthen their rosters because there's a bit more, maybe with the exception of Manchester, who have gone almost like the kind of Chester Jets model of the past, which 
It's worked for them in the past and they've got some quality players this season again, Manchester. But has it forced teams to think, okay, you know what, our on-court needs to be better so that, you know what, we're going to try and go eight, nine, ten deep rather than six or seven quality players plus bring three academy guys, just for say. So has London doing what London doing maybe the last season or so, has it come to fruition this season in terms of their success, attracting guys like Decker when Ovi was here, Luke Nelson? Like these are great players and having some of them are having brilliant seasons. But I genuinely think what London are doing, lots of that should be getting replicated by teams up and down the league. And but, just but accepting, it, it just accepting... Pardon? It just can't be, though. But it, that's it, why I said it, some it, elements of it. But it. It can be if, if London attract more investors to invest in other teams, right? So if you're a big investor, you know, we always talk about this, the, the old billionaire's handshake, right? There's a lot of them out there and they all know each other. You all of a sudden attract more investors like that into the league then it's a whole different ball game look at where gladiators are going to be you know they've got they, they, they've not exactly skint right now right then they they they're, they're going into a stadium that they're building for the future they're going to be a very competitive team look at where before it all went tits up look at where raiders were and who was actually owning them is these turkish guys right who have a lot of money who own Bashir College, where Sam Decker used to play, right? Is it is mm. Sam, Sam and Bashir, wasn't he? I'm not sure, but go on. Yeah, but he was in the same league, sorry. Where, Turkish um, league, yeah. Yeah, and if that didn't all go tits up, then all of a sudden you you would have three teams in the league with with big money owners. All right, well, you just said it there, Paul. If it hadn't have gone tits up, no, I, I hate yeah, to... Was- I hate, to, situation. <laughs> I, I hate to pull this one out, but I'll talk to you again in maybe three or four years because I hate to sound like the old guy in the room, and this is a real British basketball thing to say. I've seen this all before. Yeah, yeah, no. I, Absolutely. I don't, really I don't think we've ever got to this stage before. No, Correct. we got to a bigger and better stage before because there was more teams being able to do it. There was several teams. The talent was spread a bit more. Yeah. Not not just one team that are, are just cruising around, you know, spending money like it's water and, and no one can come close to it. We even look at yesterday's advert for British basketball in terms of anyone watching that who's got a bit of penny, you'll want some of that. Thousands of people. Like the, like I said to Paul, I was oh, I came home last night, edited the stuff I did, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to sit and watch the game back. And on the YouTube stream alone, there was over already over 10,000 views of the YouTube stream. Well, so digitally... We're doing, a bit, we're doing a BBL, the BBL a bit of a disservice there because for years the BBL have been filling arenas um, for the Cup, the Trophy and the Playoff Finals at the O2. Yep. So that's nothing, that's nothing to do with London. That's something that Agreed. the BBL have done really well for years. There's been, you know, a lot of stuff in the in the in the in the recent, you know, in the last ten years that they haven't done a great job of. But what they've always managed to do is fill the O2 at the end of the season, fill the NIA for the for the cup and wherever the trophies played, that's full as well. So we can't credit London for the great job that the league have done. Well, there's a, there's a there's an unfortunate crossover there, isn't there? There's a there's a conflict yeah, of interest. Seven, 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 well, there is the because obviously the league is owned by the yeah. same people that own the Lions, but they can't turn around and say, "Ah, now that we're the finances, we filled the O2 at the end of the season because we were there last season and it was full. The year before it was full. The year before that it was full." I guess. You know? I guess what we're looking at to some degree is that is how the seven 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 bridge the gap, how they assist teams to bridge the gap and how the league is is moved forward because I mean I, I don't relish the the thought of another three or four years of Lions winning everything uh, convincingly and the other teams playing catch up and us hoping that the Lions get knocked out of a cup competition so we can have a game like we did have yesterday or Sunday exactly. if you're listening to this later on that, that that's not great but in terms of, and I have to bring this back now because that was the whole the whole thing of it. Out of the four of us, which uh, which two of us had the Riders making second? I think it was. Oh, I, had, I had Manchester second. 
I think I had Manchester top three. No, no, I mean, like the other week, like I think it was last week or the week before when we said, as it stands at the moment, who's finishing second, Flyers or Riders? Oh, I think I'd pull Leicester, yeah. Oh, I said Flyers. I know, I know what I said, Leicester. Yeah. The, the guys who said Leicester, you still, are you still confident on that? Yeah. Less so. <laughs> Good. Okay. Well, that went because in a not looked at it. <laughs> that went in a, in a direction I wasn't expecting it to go in. Let's uh, let's put a pen in this because this obviously is going to be something we'll discuss further. The, the the closer we get to the playoffs, most likely. Um, let's move on for now. Do you, uh, let, we could talk briefly if you want to about GB not entering the Olympic prelims. It sparked a, a reaction on Twitter um, and other social media outlets. Of course, uh, some people saying that they can they can see why it's better to have some friendlies and get the squad together and whatnot. And there's some people saying, well, what's what's better than uh, actual com- you know professional actual competition against teams that we're trying to. Mm-hmm aspire to be like if you like or trying to get up with in terms of uh, the and, and also the, the the positives of the going through that process and knowing how that process works going through the Olympic pro li- prelims and there's some obviously that think now that there's a huge pressure on, on the team to do something a Euro basket because they're giving up quite a lot to uh, to focus on that where, where, where do we stand on this fellas um, Adzma man you, you're the British basketball guy well, I mean, it's, it's the age old thing with anything to do with Team GB. Um, the thing that's always, you know, been a problem is the fact that every other nation has long camps for their international stuff. Hmm. And we simply don't. We put the squad together and then we basically head out to wherever we're, we're, we're playing, get a couple of practices in, and then, and then go into you know, important games. And when you think about it that way, what the GB women have done, you know, numerous times over the years, it's incredible, you know, how far that they've taken it based on the fact that they'll have, what, two or three practices. I mean, from talking to the GB players at the last window, that was the longest that they've been together on a on a window in a long time. And they had uh, more practices than they've had. I want to go back to, I think it might have been the Olympic qualifiers um, and I'm pretty sure that it was Team China that had been together practicing, doing, d- preparing mm. for uh for that for the tournament from the January, and the games were in the May or the June or something. Sounds probably sounds um, right. Yeah. When you look at that, and then poor GB get together, have two practices before they you know play on the court that they're going to play on. Yeah. And they still go on to do what they've done. That that is always going to be the problem for GB men and women is that there just doesn't seem to be the time and the resources to be able to to have a proper training camp going into big tournaments. Because you've got to be thinking a tournament as big as 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 Eurobasket or the other one, you need a month together. Yeah, at least to prepare for it. You, you know, and then we get down on it when they don't do so well. It's like, well, what what do you expect? Every yeah. other team in the world prepares for it. Grant, my man. Yeah, because if you think about it, if, if, for example, every team are the exact same level, have the exact same ability, the team that have played more and practiced more in the build-up will have better chemistry and will get better yeah. results. It's almost as if GB has dealt themselves a poor hand over and over again, which then puts into context how well the girls have done top 20 mm-hmm. in the world. Oh, God, yeah. Numerous Eurobasket qualifying, mm. like it's been they're, brilliant, they've and done they it deserve again recently. Yeah, they've that's exactly it. Again. They've done it in, again in the face of adversity as well. Mm. So, in terms of the guys, we hear a lot of noise about it every time, yet nothing really has changed. So there does seem yeah. to be a monumental shift in that direction and an acknowledgement that actually, you know what, we need to do different. But why not do both? Mm. Yeah. Why not get in camp, have camps, have games in the build up to this Olympic qualifying? And then, you know what? It might not be, but it's going to put the program in a better place, medium to long term, than not playing these competitive games. So 
It depends what they can if they can get games set up where they know it's going to work for them. I'm curious to see how big a camp they'll have, who will actually commit to it, because that seems to be half the issue. Sometimes we see a long list of names announced every window, and well, GB didn't even fill the bench this time round. Like Ben mm. Mockford was there, and he was in civvies both games. Mm. Was I reading somewhere as well <clears throat> recently that the because remember there's three entities here. There's basketball England. There's um, that's what's called GB basketball, basketball wheels. And there's the Bra- uh, British CBS, Basketball Federation or whatever yeah. it is. Now, did I read somewhere recently that they put somebody in a high position? Yes, we'll talk. We'll talk about that in a sec. Let's let's get Nicholson's thing on the GB thing, and then we'll I will bring it up in a second. I I can't disagree what what either of you said, and doing both seems like a logical progression to progress, right? Um, but one thing I wonder if there is a lot of pressure from Sport England and, and things like that and, and GB Sport on on funding medal potential because that's historically what gets funded, right? If they got yeah, medal yeah. potential, they get funded. Would it do more harm than good if they go into the Olympics or if they prepare in a different way and make a good showing in the Europeans, then when it comes around to the Olympics after that, there's a more there's a, there's a bigger likelihood that there will be investment. I don't know. It's just a mm-hmm. random thought which came into my head when when kind of just listening to you guys. Well, the Olympics, let's face it, is the biggest sports show on earth. Well, exactly, yeah. So um, if you have a poor um, showing of yourself, are you going to get funding for the next one? Well, this this is it. I mean, there was that, um, there was right, that but, documentary yeah. about how the funding went last time. And yes, indeed, you are correct. They, they base it on on a point system as to who's who's more likely to win medals to where the money goes. But, you know, you sort of look at the big picture and go, all right, well, if the BBL's going in the direction that we're all hoping it's going to go, then now's the time to start going, right, let's try and showcase something at the biggest sporting event in the world because Eurobasket, unless you follow the game like we do, you know, it's not like people, oh, the, the nations at a standstill because it's Eurobasket. You know, I'm sure it is in other countries, but it's certainly not in the UK. Um, so it's, it's, you know, it's a real catch-22. Well, you mentioned the uh, the new... Um, Position. Position. Performance, performance, performance lead, I think, is the role. I'm just trying to find... Um... It's a squ- someone to do with squash, isn't it? No, it's water polo. She, she, so it's she's water been a, polo. appointed performance lead. Um, was a, a GB water polo player like me, and um, also worked for uh, British Cycling, the GB Cycling. Um, didn't get a very good response on Twitter. Well, it's um, not going to. Dan Routledge and and Dave Forrester particularly down on it after. Um, well, Dan, you can see where they're coming from because their, their, their comments on it are, are basically, you know, we've British basketball has been doing this for years. It's been appointing people that aren't basketball people to do roles yeah. within the basketball community and it's not worked yet. So you can kind of see where they're coming from. There is a line of thought that actually she's been very successful with other sports, not water polo because that's gone down the fucking carsy, but... Um, Cycling, particularly, there's also arguments along those lines that, well, she's done very well in cycling, but cycling gets all the funding because it's one of those sports where you can get multiple gold medals. Whereas, but then Boston, she's been under then more gold. pressure in that situation to maintain that performance as well. Uh, definitely more pressure, but probably more um, access to more things, if you like. And what's and she a major part of getting that funding? Who knows? She's some. She's more of a link between getting players. Um, it's to do with uh, is it regular physiotherapy and sports therapy and okay. access to the to the good to the good stuff, <laughs> right. which then okay. to me doesn't necessarily have to be a basketball minded person. It totally depends on Fair. yeah the remit. It totally depends if it's looking after players or being their kind of liaison to ensuring they've got good care whilst they're with GB or coming into camp. How are they looking physically and? Are they doing okay mentally? Like, how are they performing? That's okay. That doesn't need to be a basketball-minded person. They need to be a 
good organised person who gets what top level athletes need to be able to perform. What this I also lot... su- sorry, go on. You go. No, no, on you go, on you go. Well, I was going to say it also suggests that maybe they maybe a bit more contact time regarding the Brit GB squad because all these things are great, but like Ad said at the moment, they're meeting up two weeks before they got to go and play. Yeah. So if, if if she's got a two week window, that's not good. But if obviously things are going to change a bit and open up and and perhaps what? yeah, go ahead. The two ways you can look at this. And sorry, I seem to be having my six monthly on my high horse show here. Ah, but let's do it. <laughs> but I'm going to get back on my steed and and be on it for for a little while longer. If We've I only got two minutes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well. <laughs> What I'd say to all that is that, great, yeah, you do need a super organised person that's had success in other sports, great, nice one. But it has been proven before that British basketball, for some reason, has been a little bit inept in putting the right people in to do the job. I refer to Luol Deng and Pops Mensa Bonsu yep. and the conversation they had. And then all I'll say is this, look at what Pops has done with um, African basketball. Sorry, Luol oh, Deng has yeah. gone with basketball in Africa and it's now a force to be reckoned with. That could have been the UK. Yeah. And it's and it's, it's another not... case to have a look what you could have won, guys. She it does say as well that she's interim performance lead, which suggests short term. So is this a, to what though? Is this a new role? If this is a completely new role well, p- potentially, I don't know. Then don't know enough about it's it. It's really it. interesting. Because it's then like, well, okay, this is something different. I uh, without the knowledge to be like, how was this role done previously, or if it's not mm. been done for years, then this, if it is a new role or something that is coming back in, then it should be a positive. Mm. If it's something that's that, just yeah. been shared around for anyone from any of the kind of home nations to try and do, and they're now making it a specific person job, even better again. Um, so, a po- so a go point on, that's very quickly because per- we're going to take a break. A- appoint a basketball person to work alongside them, then. Yeah, and I suppose it depends on what if the role's not basketball related and it's purely keeping in touch with them and making sure they're what they need to head into camp. I suppose it doesn't matter if it's. I don't know. I'd, I'd, I'm curious to see if there's more roles to come then. Well, let's take a quick break. We'll come back, finish things off with some BTL five predictions and a quick fire. Uh, some quick fire questions. See you in a sec. Okay, it's time for us to name our BTR five. Five players from the weekend. Not many games to choose from. Five players from the weekend who we think had stand-up performances. Not necessarily statistic-based. Could be that they did something. Oh, I don't know. Hit a game-winning shot, for example, in a big game. Uh, anything along those lines. They don't even have to be on the winning side, if you like. Um, I've written down. I've got about six names written down, so I'm not going to go first because I've got to work mine out a bit more. Nicholson, you got some? Yeah. Yeah. Go yeah, on. Yeah. All right. David Sloan. Yep. Bailey. Yep. Onwaz. Yep. Ali Hosjits and Durham. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's different to mine. I, they won the freaking trophy, man. And they deserved it. <laughs> Go on then, Grant. So, mine is, to be honest, it's the same. <laughs> but and I don't know how I can not select him but Durham's 12 points I'm replacing him with Fraser Malcolm those two three pointers in that first half were crucial we could have been down by 10 13 points so yeah. I'm taking Fraser Malcolm because that made the game that made the game a two pointer in my eyes going into half time so I'm going Sloan I'm going Onwaz I'm going <laughs> Bailey I'm going Ali Hodgett <laughs> And I'm oh. going Fraser Malcolm. And before Paul, I, I wish I went first because I was doing this exactly that. <laughs> <laughs> That's my man. What you got? You know what? I'm going to go with exactly what Grant said, and I totally agree with him about those three pointers because they were back to back. They were cr- the, you, when you look at the the grand scheme of it, 
they were crucial. And I also saw an interview with him um, that I really liked as well, where he came across as just being a really good dude. Yeah, at the beginning, right? Yeah. yeah. Was it him where you were saying he had a load, he's a teacher and he had a load yeah, of his kids there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You mean um, you didn't I'm listen real... to his Gladcast interview of me in the build-up for the game, no? I've not heard it, Grant, I'm sorry. I will listen to it, it's on my list. But nah, I'm going with Grant. Um, I don't think even I can find an excuse to not have, loving not living in the team. <laughs> I just think for me it was it was the five that finished the game. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's Durham does well on the ball, but I need to get Fraser Malcolm in that five somehow. Well, he's in because yeah. uh, Ads has Ads has pushed it over the edge. Um, we got Bailey Sloan. Sloan's got to be the lowest index play we've ever had in a BTL five, but you can't leave him out. What, what was his index? Four. <laughs> yeah. Hey, like we don't do our BTR five based on stats. No, no, absolutely. Um, I'm just frantically typing now. So Bailey hey. Sloan, Onwaz, Ali Hodzic, and Fraser Malcolm. Sloan, Sloan, the, uh, the JLC of the five pubs. Yeah, hundred percent. You know what though? I've done this after having been absolutely blown away with how good sharks were. And I would be. Well, no, I'd say Nelson down on mine, but I just ignored it. I've just gone with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I wasn't going to select Nelson. I thought Rodney Glasgow, that was his best game I've seen him play in a long time. Very good. He was brilliant coming off the bench. Very good. 15 points in 22 minutes. Yeah, he was pretty good. Let's move on. <laughs> we're almost. Easy. Yeah, we're almost at the end. Uh, we'll do some predictions. So what was the five see? then? What's the five, Pabs? Do you want me to read it again? Yeah, please. Bailey, uh, Sloan, Onwaz, Ali Hudzic, and Malcolm. Brilliant. Tell him if you're listening, you're my guy. <laughs> oh, <I'll do> <laughs> right, so have some predictions. I love, I love it. You. Um, only three games, obviously, at the weekend, but there's been oh, there's been some little little number changes going on. Lions obviously got the win, so we all get a point for that. Myself and Nicholson had the Sharks. Grant and Ads had the uh, Riders, and we all had the Gladiators except for Ads, who went for his trusty old Knicks. So Ads is on ninety two. Nicholson's now on a full house for Nicholson, 95. I am on 101. And Grant's on 102. Come on! <laughs> not going to lie, this week coming up could kill me. This could break me. <laughs> a lot of games. Make or break indeed. So we're tipping off tomorrow night. If you're listening to this, it's we're recording this on uh, Monday night. Sorry, Wednesday night. Not, God, No, it is tomorrow night. How weird is that? Tuesday night game. Is yeah. it a game tomorrow night? Yeah, Riders at home. Patriots are visitors. Um, go on then, Nicholson. Really? you got to come to me. Yeah. Like, do you know what, though? Keeping it real, it's becoming harder and harder for me to be biased as the weeks go on. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. Just do it. I know. You've got I'm, to. It's the rules. I'm going to go Pats down already, but yeah. I'm going Patriots. <laughs> I, I did actually speak to our VC today in the office, and I did say to oh, him, yeah. if you pick up a W against R- Riders this week, I'll take you out free course, slap up meal anywhere you want. And I, and I said that in good faith that I, our VC like, lives on chicken nuggets and chips, so I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell his nutritionist. <laughs> Wait, everybody else going Riders? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there is so, so flying bad, everywhere right? in mm. Raiders' favour. So we skip then to the fr- is that Friday or Saturday? Friday, isn't it? Yeah. Friday thirty first. Um, Lions at home scorches the visitors. <clears throat> are we going? Are everybody going Lions, or is anyone going Scorchers? Be nice to know. Adds doesn't want to, but he's going lines. 
<laughs> yeah. Nah, lions here. Yeah. Lions. Then. God, busy weekend for the Pats, isn't it? Um, away yeah, for the Patriots. Like Manchester that, Giants at home. Patriots, the visitors. You've got three games this week, Paul. Yeah. Ads, yeah. my man. You going Giants? I am. Nicholson, you going Pats? Yep. Okay. Pats are max. I'm going to sit with Nicholson for the whole game. <laughs> I'm going to go. I'll go Giants. Grant, where are you going? Hi. <laughs> I'm excited to see at least a picture in the group chat of these two oh, yeah. fine gentlemen together. Could, so, could we put, so man we put a camera on us for the whole game, Ad? Just me and you sat next to each other. Yeah, yeah. Fact, game I reactions. Might arrange, I might even arrange to see if you and me can do a, a competition at some point <laughs> during the game. I'll tell you oh, what, it'd be, fucking, sure. it'd be way the BTR version of the uh, Kieran Achara Mike Tuck reactions to what was going on in the final. It would be the... Just Adam, Adam Masters and Paul Nicholson. Yeah. <laughs> Go on, mate. What are you going for? Giants or Pats? Mm. Sorry, Paul. Giants. You lot can piss off. <laughs> Eagles, Knicks. This one's not easy to pick. Eagles have been on a bit of form. Phoenix uh, picked up a, a loss to the Gladiators, obviously, in the trophy final. What are you going for, Pablo? Hammered the Pats on that one. Um, do you know what I'm going Eagles Ooh. adds my man a little bit of Paul just broke further there Um, Eagles at home did I say that already yeah Eagles at home jeez and it's a bit of a hangover I think from the from the uh, from the trophy final perhaps Eagles. Grant, my man. Having seen the way Cheshire left the court on Sunday, I've never seen players look so broken. Like, having left everything out in the court, mm. it's, you know what, if Cheshire get the win on Friday night, Ben Thomas has worked amazing during the week to get them there like that. He's, he's going to have to pick off bodies off the floor mm. to get them back get them motivated but then again sometimes when you're your best victories are when you're down but I genuinely think Newcastle will win this one Nicholson I had a great chat with Ben Thomas at the Patriots Cheshire game and he is convinced and determined to finish top four still well, they're not out of the running by any stretch we um, haven't talked about them for it but to be fair they're not out of the running I want them to win and I think they're going to win as well. I, I think they're going to bounce back and really just step it up and go, right, okay, we didn't get this one. Mm. We will prove everyone wrong and get to that top four spot and have a run in the playoffs. And, you know. Next for you then. Yes, that. Excellent, yes. So the, uh, the zag is the Knicks. Who'd have thought that at this stage? Here's the big one, possibly the game of the weekend. Leicester Riders at home. Bristol Flyers, the visitors, is an yeah, awful this lot riding game. on this. It is, is it? yeah. There's an awful lot riding on this game. But will the riders be able to ride it out in the uh, riding style and fit the word ride in a bit more? Um, uh, where do we go with this? Who hasn't gone first yet? Ads, my man. Riders. Riders. He's going riders. Confident. Uh, who was the other Grant you were the other one Adam top two are you going Flyers or Riders I don't think I've said Flyers enough so for Matt who on on the Discord and BBL Daily just this one's for you I'm I'm going Bristol I'm going Bristol as well Nicholson damn it I wanted to go Bristol but then you two have bloody gone Bristol that's why we're up the you're top, bit, mate. That's why you're about 10 points back. <laughs> <laughs> about to be more after this weekend. Poor old Nicholson. <laughs> I remember when I was top. Um, right. Okay. Ads is behind me. You two are in front of me. So I'm going Leicester. Right as it is for Nicholson. Oh, there's a load of fixtures this week, isn't there? Um, we skip to the Sunday. Surrey Scorchers at home. Eagles, the visitors. 
I'm going to go Eagles again. That's my man. Eagles. Grant. Eagles. And eighth place is closing in. Nicholson. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> More wishful thinking, isn't it, from uh, Nicholson? Sorry, please. Sorry. <laughs> Here you go, here's the big one. Now, Patriots at home, less the riders, the visitors. Can you tell LVC that if they get a win on that one, then me and you will take him to Healy Cider Farm <laughs> at the end of the season? Hey, if we get two wins against Leicester, freaking <laughs> hell, I'll, I'll, honestly, I'll be his flipping servant for the week. I had a hell of a day Sunday. I went to Healy Cider Farm, got back just in time for the trophy final. It was amazing. Absolutely amazing. Day, actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, go on, Nicholson, you can go first. Pats all the riders. Patriots. Everyone else going riders? Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. Blimey, what a fixture this is. Flyers, London Lions. Flyers at home, Lions are visitors. Are we all going Lions or is anyone taking the Flyers? Go on, Ads. Yeah, yeah. Flyers. Ads is taking flyers. Grant, you Lions? Yeah, I'm going Lions. Nicholson? Oh. Flyers. Oh. Uh, I think I'm going to go Lions. I think Flyers are going to be exhausted from beating the. Uh, I can't believe that was almost a zag by me. <laughs> Uh, last two fixtures for the weekend. Gladiator is at home. Manchester Giants, the visitors. This one also has a lot resting on it. Both those teams going for fourth spot. Grant, my man, any hangover from the from the trophy win? Or are Glad's getting this one? Absolutely not. Momentum. Momentum will see the boys through. Gladiators. Ads, my man, you got anything to say about that? Um, Not really. Oh, you're going for Gladiators as well? No. no. <laughs> Just no comment. Nicholson? Well, if it helps you out, I'm going to go Giants because I think traditionally teams struggle after they play in a final, let alone win one. Yeah. It's a big gap though for them, isn't it? A week. Yeah. A week. Standard. Yeah. Nah, I... I think half the team will still be pish, so I mean I, we're Scottish that we're probably better. Uh, I'm going Manchester. <laughs> There's a zag on that one by the looks of it. A weird, a funny old zag, that one. It's a tough one to pick. Um last one of the weekend then. Cheshire Phoenix, the home side. Sheffield <coughs> Sharks, the visitors. Are we Hasty. Is everyone taking well, I don't know. Let's I'll go Sharks. Add Sharks on Knicks. Phoenix. Uh, Next. Grant. Um. Drum roll. Great, co- great content. This pause and a oh, side listen, breath. This is what the, people tune in for, man. Hey, our listeners are lucky. Our um, listeners are the best. Like legends. Um, oh, I'm shit. going to. <laughs> I'm going to choose the. I forgot who's playing. Oh, go on. Your uh, field sharks. Sharks, if you're sharks. Nicholson. Put me in a predicament because I was hoping you were going to go Cheshire, so I was going for another zag. But you're Mister Irrelevant now. <sighs> the Pats come up big this weekend. He's going to dick on all of us. I know. <laughs> hey, gonna, I'll tell you what, if they do, mate, wait till that Monday show. If all the fixtures go his way as well, and the Eagles lose both games, we're all we're all uh, we're all about the same. Um, it's actually a really tough game, though, isn't it? Let's be honest, because Sharks Knicks, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's a, that's a really tough one to call. There's okay. so many good games this weekend. I think Sharks have been on a roll. Um, and I'm going to just give Cheshire the credit here to go bounce back ability and win two games this week. There you are. And that's the fixtures, I think. That's all of them, isn't it? Yeah, that's the fixtures done for this week.
let's finish off with one, two, three, four. We've got five quick fire ish questions sent in from fans uh, and listeners alike on Twitter and on the email. Hello at below the rim dot UK. Cue the music. I haven't chosen it yet, but we'll cue it anyway. Uh, question number one. <laughs> Favourite BBL player right now? Nicholson, go. Uh, okay, uh, Dusha. Grant Young? You would swoon. Ads, my man. Wow, well, well done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's a Brandon for me. Is that, that's weird, isn't it? But he's, uh, he's my favourite player right now. Um, you can buy any BBL jersey right now. I guess which team and what name and number do you have it on the back? And it doesn't specify how whether or not you can have a history, like a historic one or whatever, but we'll, I'll, I'll leave that over to you. Let's uh, add to my man. What you have? Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. What are you having on it? Name and number. Oh, yeah, Dusha. Number twelve, Dusha. Grant, my man. What are you having? Um, Bunyan Nine Rock and Rock Ah, Gladiator's Blue One. Nicholson? It's slow, number one. Yeah, I'd, I'll, I'll go, I'd have a slow one as well. 100%. First, first season as Canada, yeah. First yeah. season in the BBL. That, same here. That, that jersey. That exact jersey. In fact, can I have that jersey you took the shot in? That'd be that'd be a dream. But there you go. I said my answer before you. I'm still having that one. Favourite song slash piece of music for team intros. Suggestions. It doesn't have to be something that exists at the moment. You can, if you've got a favourite, go for it. Grant, my man. The Braveheart speech. Oh, nice. I'm sure an NFL team has used that before. Like, I know they use Remember the Titans quite a lot on, on those various things, but I'm pretty sure that the Braveheart speech was used at the Super Bowl. Uh, Nicholson. Guns and Roses, welcome to the jungle. Ooh, interesting. Oh, I had Grant, yeah. I do like it was the White Stripes Seven Nation Armies, though. Quick fire, Grant. <laughs> Adds my man. The Alan Parsons project, serious. Is that the uh, Bulls intro? Yeah. Yeah, they used to use that all throughout the 90s, didn't they, on all the cup finals? On the playoff finals. Mine is uh, Space Odyssey 2001. Uh, whichever way around you say it, 2001 or Space Odyssey. With the old kettle drums. Uh, not very really bad, mate. we won. No, no. <laughs> Did you ever hear the uh, Mark and Lard parody of that? Ground control to Ginger Tom. Yeah. <laughs> right, you start a new BBL franchise. What current player do you start, do you build around and briefly why uh, Nicholson uh, Decker best, best player in the league does everything mm. Grant my man um, <coughs> can it be the same player Sam Decker he's he can't even how he speaks imagine him being like the guy you're going to sponsors with and like comes across just like a really good switched on guy so yeah that's my man Patrick Wheel in, in Manchester. And, and why? Well, it's quite obvious, but go on, what's your reason? Well, because I think he's the best British player in the league, and he's sort of from Manchester. Well, he's from Warrington, but it's near enough. And um, I would develop my team based around some local homegrown talent. Yep, I like that. I've uh, do I have to change mine because I've got Patrick Whelan as well. Oh really? Yeah, because I thought about Decker, but Decker for me is a player who strikes me that he's not. I mean, even if he stays for another season, he's not sticking around for a long term. I I don't think, but I could be proved wrong potentially. He could be here for three, four years. Who knows? You might like it, but Patrick Whelan's the sort of guy you can see being here for a long time, and he is a talent as well. And yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've already created a roster with, I think, seven players from Manchester to start a franchise with. Nice. They're all in the league at the moment. Are you buying a team? Yeah, yeah. Did, yeah. Hoopsix, did Hoopsix ask you? 
Yeah, he asked me at an appearance I did at some <laughs> event. On that team, then, uh, what colour are your jerseys? Ads? Pink. Oh, you bastard. <laughs> You're on the... Soul Tire Blue. <laughs> What's that? Just blue. Okay. Nicholson? The Soul Tire is like the Scotland flag. Oh, okay. Makes sense. Um, I'm, I'm going I'm going yellow with uh, either yellow and black or, or yellow and kind of dark blue. Just because it's nice. my favourite. See, I went... Do you like the blue of the rim colours? Nice. Yeah, very nice. Hey, Perhaps I get the impression you chose pink, so I'll well, change. I've, I was thinking along the lines of because I, I want to be, I'd be a tight-fisted owner, and I'd want a, one kit, and I'd want one colour that no one else has got. So I would have gone for, for. I wrote magenta, which is like a, it's pink in it essentially. <laughs> okay, well I'll change mine to the classic emerald green of the late nineties Giants. Nice, very nice too. And there we are. That is that's it for the quick fires. Anybody want to send any more in? Hello at below the rim dot uk. You can go to our website and go to the uh, listeners cues page, and you can just fill in the form on there, um, and send us uh, it sends us an email that way, or you can send it on Twitter if you fancy, or join our Discord channel and send it that way. We always get a few in there. In fact, one of the questions in there this week was, um, should we be keeping? both cups but we obviously we we talked about that anyway due to the uh, the magnitude of the game and how it went it was always going to be a topic i think but that's it for us this week ads my man thanks for joining us you got anything to plug before we go um what's going on this week i'm doing going to be commentating the weabl and eabl finals on wednesday nice live with Hooping Cazzy B of Focus Hoops on Wednesday on the Basketball England YouTube page. Nice. So, Big team. Yeah, if, if, if anyone's um, about, check it out. There's going to be some serious young talent playing. Wicked. Mr. Nicholson, sir, anything to plug before we go? Not really. No. I want, to, do want people to tune in Sunday. Well, yeah, they can do if they want. <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, we, we, yeah, we've got we've got three games this week. But you can watch a couple of games. You can come. I'm down still waiting for the next podcast, guys. Oh, me yeah. too. So it's Pablo. Yeah. <laughs> We're all waiting. Oh. I do. Try, do you know what, Nicholson? I do like this idea of setting up the laptop with a webcam on for you and me on Friday. Please do it. <laughs> Please do it. Quite just get a, just forget- get a stand big enough for your mobile phones and just just have them on your yeah. faces the whole game. Because once we've forgotten about it, it'll be really funny. Habs and I will be the only one streaming in for that one. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Well, what are you going to do from the Below the Rim YouTube page? But yeah, <laughs> please do. We don't get any hits on that. Speaking of which, you can go watch our uh, um, our Oscars special, which we which we ran out. We Obviously, we've released the audio for it as well, but you can watch it if you want it. There's some nice little clips on there. But anyway, yeah. Uh, Grant, my man, final words with you then. Uh, Any plug before we go or, or, or anything at all? What do you want to say? Well, I was up till late in the evening putting together all my kind of post-match reactions from last night. So please check that out on all major um, podcast streaming stuff for Gladcast. Um, what a Sunday I had. Or what a Sunday, everyone who... Well, you know what? British basketball had a brilliant Sunday. Mm. We had two brilliant <laughs> matches. We had a final go down to the wire. We had a buzzer beater. We had the end of the longest trophyless streak mm. in twenty years. You had Ray twenty for years ago. Twenty years ago, a bunion left in a trophy. To twenty years now, a bunion left in a trophy. Like with a, with a sword, like, with a sword. <laughs> yeah. like, Is there a dent in the lid, by the way? Probably. That was so funny. Um, <laughs> everything about yes, it was just amazing. Gladiators are really kind of building towards something really special. So, yeah, absolutely amazing. Still just trying to sum it up in words, like seeing people's pictures on social media today and speaking, messaging different people. Everyone's just so happy. And hopefully we 
uh, carry on as the season goes on is I know that this is just one of kind of several aims Gareth had for the year. So yeah, all things very good. Check out that. I also did some pre-match or pre-fixture kind of build up with Fraser Malcolm and Faro Ali Hodgic. So also check that out. And if you're an old time fan, check out the Gladcast draft. And also Sky showed it. It was friggin' awesome to see Sterling Davis back oh. at a BBL game. That guy still in shape. Could easily still have played. Top 15 player easily. Phenomenal. Well, thank you to you. Thanks, fellas, for listening. You know what I'm going to play the show with, don't you? Because it it was referred to as an unofficial anthem of Scotland. <laughs> it was, of course, the Proclaimers, which when the camera panned around, they're all singing along with. <laughs> Especially Johnny Bunyan. It's got to be said. Anyway, uh, we'll be back next week. Until then, Take it easy. We'll speak to you soon. I'm gonna be the man who wakes up next to you. When I go out, yeah, I know I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be the man who goes along with you. If I get drunk, well, I know I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be the man who gets drunk next to you. And if I heave up, yeah, I know I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be the man who's heavering to you. But I won't walk far. The man who's working hard for you And when the money Comes in for the work I do I'll pass almost every penny on to you When I come home, when I come home Oh I know I'm gonna be I'm gonna be the man who comes back home to you And if I go Well I know I'm gonna be I'm gonna be the man who's going over you I'm gonna be the man who comes back home with you